We're hearing a lot about the Electoral College this election season, but exactly why does it exist and why is it important to the presidential election? 13 On Your Side political reporter Josh Albertus explains. We talk a lot about the Electoral College, those 538 votes based on the state's results that ultimately will choose who is the next president. But we often talk less about what it means, how the votes are divvied up, and why it was even there in the first place. It actually goes all the way back to the 13 colonies when they became states and drafted the U.S. Constitution. Back then, the founders debated whether to have the people directly elect the president or to have Congress elected by the people to choose the president. So they came up with an agreement. Have each state give them each electoral votes for the college based on how many congressional districts they have based on population size, plus two more votes based on the two Senate seats that each state gets. So in Michigan's case, we will be getting 15 electoral votes this season. That's based off of the 13 congressional districts we have that represent roughly 700,000 people each and then two more for our Senate seats. So after all is said and done with this election, Michigan will select 15 people to act as the state's electors and cast their college votes for whomever won the state. Now in Michigan and in most other states, it's winner take all. Whoever wins the popular vote in the state gets all of its electoral votes. But there are a couple states in those stripes there, Nebraska and Maine. They actually split them. They give two votes to the statewide winner and then each of their other votes goes to whomever won each of their congressional districts. Why is that so important? Because there's a very real scenario here in which we could end up in a tie. Right now, forecast averages from ABC's 538 as Harris ahead in four battleground states, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Trump in those averages is slightly ahead in the other three battlegrounds, North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona. If Harris were to lose all of the southern battlegrounds, for example, Trump takes Nevada as well. Let's say, let's turn that red. It would all come down to a single congressional district outside, uh, just surrounding Omaha, Nebraska, encompassing Omaha, Nebraska. If it went for Harris in that scenario, Harris wins. If she didn't, if we turn the entire state red, then it's a tie, 269-269. In that situation, the House of Representatives then would be the body that decides the next president.